What's up everyone? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I am Educado by Sir Arnold Ryan New Mercado. And this time we're going to discuss another subject in senior high school. And this is Empowerment Technologies pang grade 11 po ito. And this is our first topic, Introduction to Information and Communication Technology. So let's go so we can discuss it ng mas malino sa ating lahat. Now I have several questions first. First question is, how many times have you checked your phone this morning? Have you checked your phone? Another, how many status updates have you posted in Facebook or Twitter today? Nagpost ba kayo? Next, did you use the internet for an hour after you woke up this morning? Another, do you follow celebrity via his or her social media accounts? If yes, if lahat ng sagot mo ay yes, 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 do you think you are digital native? If you happen to be guilty as charged in most of those questions, chances are you are a digital native. And chances are, from the moment you were born, you were surrounded by technology. You are surrounded by ICT. Pagkagising natin sa bahay, automatically, meron tayong television, meron tayong cell phone, meron tayong radio, lahat yun ay katibayan na merong ICT. At yan po, isa rin katibayan na ikaw ay isang digital native. Now, let's go with the meaning of ICT, Information and Communication Technologies. It deals with the use of different communication technologies such as mobile phones, telephones, internet to locate, save, and edit information. Therefore, ang ICT ay patungkol sa technology na ginagamit natin araw-araw at sa mga nakapalibot sa atin. Ginagamit siya to locate, save, and edit info. Tandaan po natin ang meaning ng ICT. Now, let's go with the local base. ICT in the Philippines. Actually, we are referred as the ICT Hub of Asia or according to BPO. According to 2013 edition of Measuring the Information Society by the International Telecommunication, there are 103 cell phones per 100 Filipinos. Therefore, sa isang tao, maari meron siyang isa o dalawang cell phone. Depende po yan. Kaya nga po, we are referred as ICT Hub of Asia. In data gathered by the annual survey of the Philippines Business and Industries, NSO, in 2010, the ICT industry shares 19.3% of the total employment population in the Philippines. Therefore po, katibayan lang po na lahat ng trabaho ngayon ay ginagamitan ng ICT, which is 19.3. Ibig sabihin, one-fifth of the total population ng Pilipinas ay gumagamit ng ICT. To add these statistics, Time magazines of the selfiest cities around the world of 2013 places two cities from the Philippines in the top 1 and top 10 spots. It was conducted using the study about Instagram. Therefore, may dalawang city tayo dito sa Pilipinas na talagang number 1 and number 2 na spot for selfie. So, ibig sabihin ng mga Pilipino ay talagang mahilig sa ICT. With these numbers, there is no doubt that the Philippines is one of the countries that benefits most of the ICT. Now, how do you feel about the statistics shared in the book or in the presentation? Did you find it alarming? Why some people choose to have two cellular phones? So, marami siyang questions, no? Now, internet. Let's define internet. I know we're using it internet, especially in this new norm. Internet is the global system of interconnected computer networks that use the internet protocol that links billions of devices worldwide. Ibig sabihin, connected po, kinoconnect niya ang bilyong-bilyong devices dito sa buong mundo. That's the sense of internet. It means of connecting a computer to any other computer anywhere in the world via dedicated routers. So, therefore po, ang internet talaga, and servers, therefore, ang internet po talaga is isa sa mga mahalagang way or means to communicate. 
Internet, sometimes called as the net or net, is a worldwide system of computer networks. A network of networks in which users at any one computer can get information from one computer. So, kahit na malayo ka, if connected kayo using the internet, he or she can access your files. Let's go with World Wide Web or tinatawag natin www. An information system of the internet that allows documents to be connected to other documents by hypertext links enabling the user to search for information by one document to another. So, dito pa lang, yung ibig sabihin ng WW, it connects the documents para ma-access ng lahat. It's an information space where documents and other web resources are identified by URL. Yung URL po yung nasa taas, yung address box. Invented by Tim Berners-Lee. Ayan, tandaan po natin yung ating inventor ng www now let's go with web pages web page is a hypertext document connected to the world wide web it is a document that is suitable for the world wide web so let's say for example we're searching for a website pag kinlik na rin then marami siyang info na nababas then therefore that's a web page okay now, websites is a location connected to the internet that maintains one or more pages on the World Wide Web. It is a related collection of the World Wide Web or WW files that includes a beginning file located at home page. So therefore, yung website talaga is a collection of information or data na pinagsama-sama sa isang World Wide Web. Kaya nagiging, nagiging website po ito. Let's say for example, um, Google. Nag-search ako about God. So, kapag sinearch ko yung God, ang daming lalabas na information about God. Yun yung, webs yun yung feature ng website. So, pag kinlik mo yun, it will go to the another site na kung saan it talks about the information about God. Web browser. Web browser, it displays a web page on a monitor or mobile device. Actually, marami tayong ginagamit na web browser. We have the Google, Mozilla Firefox, di ba? Opera Mini, um, and many more. So, itong mga web browsers na to, gamit yan, nakakapag-surf tayo or nakakapag-search tayo ng kailangan nating information using the internet. But remember, ICT is one of the best ways to improve business sales. And it's important for you to know how to use it in your advantage. So, ginagamit siya sa business ginagamit din siya sa education. Kaya nga natin siya pinag-aaralan. One advantage is for customers to share their thoughts with you online. Example, meron kang Facebook page. Then, nagbebenta ka ng milk tea. So, bago sila umalis, they will access the website. Then, after nun, they will give their comment regarding to your product. At least, nahirinig mo yung voice of the customers. Now, let's go with Web 2.0 or Dynamic Web Pages. When the World Wide Web was invented, most web pages were static. When I say static, hindi gumagalaw. Stable lang. Static also known as flat page or stationary in the sense that the page is as is. Yun na yun. Kung anong nakita mo, yun na siya. Walang movements, just several data. And cannot be manipulated by the user. The content is also the same with other users. So this is referred to as Web 1.0. Kung anong nakikita ng iba, yun na yung makikita mo doon sa synergy mo. So, therefore, kaya siya tinatawag na static page. Web 2.0 is a term coined by Darcy Dunushi on January 1999. It's the evolution of Web 1.0 by adding dynamic web pages. The user is able to see a website differently than others. So, dito sa Web 2.0, naging dynamic na siya. Hindi na siya static kagaya ng Web 1.0. Kasi, so web 1.0 stable lang or flat. Dito sa so web 2.0 gumagalaw na, may mga may mga ibang features na siya na iba din sa ibang user. Kung ano nakikita niya, iba na rin sa nakikita mo. It allows users to interact. Ayan, so pwede ka na makipag-comment, send back using a reply, watch videos, etc. Web 2.0 is also allows users to use web browsers instead of just Using their operating system. Ayan. So, meron na tayong browsers. 
Browsers can now be used for their user interface, application software, or web applications, and even for file storage. So, laking tulong kasi ang dami na natin nagagamit. Like for example, um, blogs, wikis, videos, hosted services, and web applications. Now, let's go with the features of 2.0, Web 2.0. First is Foxonomy. Foxonomy allows users to categorize and classify or arrange information using freely chosen keywords or tinatawag natin tagging. Popular social networking sites such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and many more use the tags or hashtag. Ang hashtag po, hindi lang siya nilalagay na hashtag ganito kasi gusto mo lang. Pag kinlik mo kasing hashtag na yun, it will... It will bring you to another set of posts na pare-parehas na meron kayong hashtag na ganyan. Bawa, hashtag God, hashtag ICT. Lahat yun, pare-parehas na pag kinlik mo yun, lalabas lahat yun na hashtag ICT. So, si malalaman mo kung sino-sino yung mga nag-post ng ganito, anong oras, bakit pinos. So, that is Foxonomy. Another is Rich User Experience. Content is dynamic and is responsive to user's input. So, kapag nag-input ako ng data ko, then may nag-reply, that's a rich user experience. Diba? Hinihingi ang kanya ng info. Hinihingi ang kanya ng data. Another is user participation. The owner of the website is not the only one who is able to put content. It's free for all. Pwedeng kahit sino ay pwedeng magbigay ng kanyang data by means of comment, um, survey checklist, etc. Or pictures or videos. Like for example, YouTube. Diyo sa YouTube, website siya. So, pwede ka mag-upload ng picture mo doon or videos. Then, after nun, pwede mag-comment doon sa sarili mong video. Then, search ka ng ibang video, you can search you can search another set of videos and you can also add your own comments. That is, user participation. Another feature is long tail. Services that are offered on demand rather than on a one-time purchase. So ito, uh, pag sinabi natin long tail, lagi na lang na humihingi siya ng, ng services na uh, subscribe ka dito, then watch this video first before watching the search video. So, kasama na rin dito yung uh, mga time-based pricing na videos or softwares. It allows you to subscribe to a data plan that charges you an amount based on sa pagkakagamit mo. Next, software as a service. Users will subscribe to a software only when needed rather than purchasing them. So, kapag, sino, kapag nag-subscribe ka dun sa software, it means um, gumamit ka lang one time. Unlike dun sa, sa purchasing, binibili mo talaga siya ng kabuan na nagiging unfair sa user. This is a cheaper option na kung saan yung software ay nagagamit mo kung kailan mo lang gugustuhin or para ka lang nag-rent, ganun. Another is mass participation. In mass participation, diverse information sharing through universal web access. Since most users can use the internet, Web 2.0 content is based on people from various cultures. So, anywhere in the world can add their culture or data sa isang website. Kahit sino American, nakabase ka sa Philippines, makikita at makikita may mga komento nila. Now, let's go with Web 3.0 and the Semantic Web. Semantic Web is a movement led by the World Wide Web Consortium or W3C. The W3C standard encourages web developers to include semantic content in their web pages. Si, time, si Tim Berners-Lee, inventor ng World Wide Web, at siya rin ang unang nag-coin ng term na semantic web. According to the W3C, it is provides a common framework that allows data to be shared and reused across application, enterprise, and community boundaries. So therefore, itong semantic web na to, it allows all people na makagamit nung same software na yun or data na yun. It's free for all para convenience sa lahat. The aim of Web 3.0 is to have machines or servers understand that users' preferences to be able to deliver the web content specifically targeting the user. Now po, ito pong Web 3.0, ang gusto niya kasi, user-friendly talaga. Batay sa kagustuhan ng 
user. So, ang target lagi ng Web 3.0 is yung customer o yung user. Now, ito po yung um, several problems din na na-encounter natin sa Web 3.0 since bago to. Kasi di ba po, ang pinaka-dominant ngayon at ang pinaka-common na ginagamit ay ang Web 2.0. May mga issues pa ang Web 3.0. Example, compatibility. HTML files and current web browsers could not support Web 3.0. Hindi lahat. Security. So, may mga security questions na kailangan pang hingin. Then, the vastness. Kapag nag-search ka kasi sa Web 3.0, napaka-broad ng web pages na lalabas. Billions and billions. So, hindi mo alam kung pipiliin mo. Another is vagueness. Certain words are imprecise. The word old and small would depend on the user. So, kung paano mo siya sinurch, yun lang ilalabas niya. So, eh, kung hindi naman yung gusto mong isearch, so, you will think another right word para mahanap mo talaga yung gusto mo. Another, logic. Since machines use logic, there are certain limitations for a computer to be able to predict what the user is referring to at a given time. So, dahil ang computer ay isang technology device or gadget, ibig sabihin po, may mga computer na hindi rin kayang um, i-process yung Web 3.0 sa sarili niyang machine. Now, let's go with the trends in ICT. So, ano ba itong mga bago na to? Yung una po kasi yung convergence. Technological convergence is the synergy of technological advancements to work on a similar goal or task. Sa convergence kasi po, uh, binibigay niya to, isa siya sa mga trends sa kung saan, kahit saan lugar ka, kung ma-achieve mo naman yung trabaho mo ng convenient ka, pero isa lang ang target ninyo, that is convergence. So, di ba, um, isang halimbawa niya, yung mga call center agents. Yung mga call center agents sa Pilipinas, ang target lang naman nila is to work sa mga inquiries ng mga customers nila. Kahit isang lugar sila, pare-pares ang sila ng kanilang target or goal. Next, another trend is social media or SOCMED. It's a website application or online channel that enables web users to create, co-create, discuss, modify, and exchange user-generated content. So dito, sa social media na to, um, inaalaw ka bilang user na makijoin, mag-ambag ng sarili mong mga content or ideas. Using posting, um, posting your posts, pictures, or videos. Or blogs, pwede rin sa blogs, di ba? Share ka ng story mo. Six, type of, six types of SOCMED or social media. First is yung social network. Pag sinabi natin social network, allows you to connect with other people with the same interest or background. So, hinahayaan ka niyang makikommunicate sa mga ibang tao na may pare-parehas kayong gusto, interest, at background. Another is yung bookmarking sites. These are sites that allow you to store and manage links to various websites and resources. Most of these sites allow you to create a tag that allows you and others to easily search or share. Uh, sa bookmarking sites po, ito po yung uh, pag may nakita ka kasing website, tapos ikiklik mo siya, mag-new tab siya sa browser mo, ibig sabihin nakabookmark yun dun sa isa pang webpage. Now po, ang kinagandahan nito, pinapadali niya yung pagsasearch mo, hindi kanya na pinapahirapan. Then even these sites, pwede mo siyang i-bookmark or i-save sa browser mo para one click away ka na lang sa susunod mong login. Another is sock news or social news. These are sites that allow users to post their own news items or links to other news sources. The users can also comment on the post and comments may also be ranked. Dito, um, sa social news, inaalaw ka niya na mag-post ng sarili mong items or news and inaalaw ka rin niya magkomento example daw niya yung reddit and dig another is media sharing these are sites that allow you to upload and share media content like images music and video most of these sites have additional social features like liking, commenting and having user profiles examples user and Instagram. Oo nga naman. So, media sharing yon. Si sinishare mo talaga. Yung, eto, mamaya. Mamaya, i-upload ko to sa ating YouTube channel. Therefore, this is an example of media sharing. Another is yung microblogging. Sa microblogging, these are sites that focus on short updates from the user. Those subscribed to the user will be able to receive this updated. 
So, example yung Twitter and Plark. Ex- um, sa microblogging kasi, kapag magbablog ka lang ng short info mo or short post mo, then after nun, kung nakasubscribe yung isang tao sa account mo or nakafollow, he or she will be notified na meron kang ginawang update sa yung account. Another is in blogs and forums. These websites allow users to post their content. Other users are able to comment on the said topic. So, marami tong free blogging sites na to, like Blogger, Tumblr, lahat yan ay nabibigay ng web services na about blogs and forums. Kapag nag-search ka nga ng question mo, may makakita kang forums. It's a chain of comments. Then, babasahin mo na din. Pwede ka magbasa or pwede ka rin mag-comment na lang. Now, let's go with another trend. Mobile technologies. So, pag sinabi nating mobile technologies, talks about smartphones and tablets na matagal na talagang nauuso hanggang ngayon. Araw-araw nga may bagong version, di ba? Several of these devices are capable of using high-speed internet. Ang pinakabago ngayon, yung latest mobile device natin is yung LTE, di ba? Uh, which is currently mobile network. Ang pinakamabilis natin ngayon ay 4G. Yung minababalit ang 5G, hindi pa siya na-test as of now, pero po, maglo-launch na rin ang Pilipinas soon ng fix na na 5G sa Pilipinas. Mobile devices use different operating systems. We have the iOS, yung mga gumagamit ng Apple devices, like iPhone and iPad. We have also the Android. So, sa Android naman, is developed by Google. So, papansin niyo po, lahat ng Android phones natin, lagi hinahanapan tayo ng Gmail account or Google account. Yan kasi po, Android po yan. Except for the Huawei. Then, being open source means several mobile phones companies use them as free. We have also the BlackBerry OS na kung saan uh, mga BlackBerry devices ang naka-access sa BlackBerry OS. We have also the Windows Phone OS, a closed source and proprietary operating system developed by Microsoft naman. We have also Symbian. Ito yung pinaka unang OS. Kung nakakita kayo ng Nokia, Nokia Phone na dikipad, Symbian operating system ang gamit nila doon. Yun yung pinaka luma na sa lahat. We have also the Web OS. Originally used for smartphones, now used for smart TVs. So yung mga TV natin, bakit nakakapaglagay tayo ng flash drive? Di ba nakakapunod tayo ng movies, makapatugtog tayo, makakonect sa internet. Web OS na nakalagay doon na operating system niya. Then another is yung Windows Mobile, developed by Microsoft for smartphones and packet PCs. Actually, yung Windows Mobile po, maliit lang din siya na computer desktop talaga. Na parang naka-cellphone mode lang ang itsura. Developed by Microsoft. Another trend is yung assisted media. Sa assisted media po, it's a non-profit service designed to help people who have visual and reading impairments. A database audio recordings is used to read to the user. So, ito na mga assisted media para siya sa mga persons with disabilities natin na kung saan these are intended to help them para makapagbasa at kung ano-ano pa. Now, if you want to have a copy of our presentation, just send a message via email and like also my FB page, I am Educado. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There's the link. Connection lost na po tayo. Goodbye everyone. Thank you so much. Music